Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Lindgren. Like so many other places in the country, gas prices are heading up in the southern tier, and it looks like that climb won't slow down anytime soon. Big Fox's Matt Kleindienst has more on what's causing the spike. Good evening, southern tier residents are entering the weekend with higher gas prices, with some stations seeing a 20 cent increase from last week. The impacts of the Russian invasion of Ukraine are starting to be felt at the pump. For instance, the mobile gas station on Denison Parkway in Corning went from 3.81 a gallon to 4.19 a gallon, all in the span of a week. The story rings true for other nearby gas stations, with many residents experiencing sticker shock at the pump. According to AAA, much of the southern tier clips $4 a gallon at the pump, marking the first time that's occurred since 2012. Pennsylvania isn't too far behind, with many northern tier counties surpassing the $4 mark earlier this week. New York and Pennsylvania reportedly have the highest gas prices on the East Coast, according to AAA. The U.S. and other international energy agencies countries are working to counteract the price hikes by releasing 60 million barrels of oil from its reserves. Matt Clendon's Big Fox, WYDC in Corning. Now to the latest on the crisis in Ukraine. Fears of a global disaster following a fire at a large nuclear power plant in southern Ukraine. The fire is out, but Lauren Blanchard reports from Poland on the growing Russian attacks. Russian troops capturing Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Their assault on Ukraine seemingly far from over. Heavy shelling at a critical nuclear power plant sparking a blaze. Firefighters got a handle on the flames and smoke as Russian troops took control of the facility. We have to act in consequence. So for us, the IEA, it is time for action. The International Atomic Energy Agency confirming no radiation was released. Still, global concerns of a nuclear catastrophe remain high. It alone could be as dangerous as six Chernobyls. This is terror on an unprecedented level. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Brussels, along with NATO and European Union leaders, all condemning the attack. This just demonstrates the rec recklessness of this war and the importance of uh, Ending it. On Friday, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned neighboring nations not to interfere. Russia's attacks growing more brazen, reducing cities to rubble. The harsh reality from which more than a million have escaped, creating a humanitarian crisis not seen in decades. I tell my mom that I, I, I will go to a boat uh, to save my life. Mom was crying and tell me that, that maybe she never see me again. UNICEF reporting 500,000 children have fled along with their families, many of them ending up at refugee centers just like this one nearby the Ukrainian border. In Beshemishal, Poland, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. The casualties of war taking a devastating toll in the city of Chernihiv after it was bombarded by Russian airstrikes. A local TV station there showed pictures of heavily damaged residential buildings up in flames. Debris all over the streets and rescue workers looking for any possible victims. One resident was brought to tears calling the scene a nightmare and expressed concern for the safety of a friend and her children. Ukraine's state emergencies agencies reporting at least 33 civilians were killed in the attack in Chernihiv. The U.S. Supreme Court has reinstated the death penalty sentence for the Boston Marathon bomber. Johar Sarnayev is back on death row after justices reversed a federal appeals court ruling last year, which threw out the death sentence and ordered a new penalty phase trial. The April 2013 bombing attack at the Boston Marathon killed three spectators and a police officer who died days later. Over 250 people were injured. Sarnayev was convicted on all 30 charges connected to the bombing. The 28-year-old is currently serving out multiple life sentences at a high-security prison in Colorado. More cities are dropping mask mandates after the CDC revised its map of high-transmission areas. Jonathan Seri has the latest from Atlanta. 
The numbers keep ticking down. Just over 51,000 new COVID cases reported in the U.S. on Thursday, bringing the seven-day average to 55,000. The positive trends prompting a re-evaluation by the CDC of which counties are considered high risk based on community transmission and hospital capacity, with 90% of Americans now living in areas where masking in public is not recommended. As you can see on the updated map, most of those high-risk counties are now in rural areas, a gap also highlighted by a new CDC study showing four in 10 rural parents say their child's pediatrician did not recommend vaccination compared to just 8% for parents in urban communities. Get your kids vaccinated. I think that's going to be one of the biggest messages I can say. If they meet criteria to get vaccinated, get them vaccinated, prevent serious illness. The new guidance leading to more restrictions being lifted, including in Los Angeles, where an indoor mask mandate in place for much of the past two years comes to an end Friday. Business owners say they're looking forward to seeing their customers' faces again. I am very happy, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure our guests are going to be more than happy. But some of those customers say they're still planning to mask up for now. I am going to keep it on anyway. Yeah, I'm kind of, like, nervous. And another sign life is returning to normal. The NFL is dropping all COVID-19 restrictions for the 2022 season. It is the first major American sports league to take that step. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. Dollar General hopes to create 10,000 new jobs this year. The discount chain says it's a 6% increase to its current workforce. Some of the jobs will be at new warehouses that will supply merchandise and its DG Fresh operation, which supplies fresh and frozen foods. Employees are also being hired for its private fleet network and for its new pop shelf stores. Dollar General recently announced plans for more than 1,100 new locations. SEALs are helping researchers get a deep dive into climate change in Antarctica. Gary Baumgarten has more on how the marine animals are gathering data for scientists. Eight Wadul SEALs are taking the plunge. Working with researchers from Japan to gather data in the cold depths of Antarctica. Areas too harsh for humans to access. During the summer, we can go buy icebreakers to conduct actual research activities so that we can collect data there. But during the winter, such things cannot be done in many places. The diving team is equipped with conductivity, temperature, and depth sensors, allowing the researchers on land to monitor their behavior and track their journeys while recording much-needed climate change data, such as water temperatures and salt levels. Researchers are also given insights into the seals' feeding habits and the path of warm water through Antarctica. When we analyzed the diving behaviors of the seals in the recordings, we were able to detect signals that seals were catching food in the warm water that had flowed in as well as in the surrounding water area. Researchers hope to take this venture even further by reshaping the sensors to fit other animals. In the future, I would like to make the device a little smaller and apply it to more animals such as penguins. The advantages with penguins are that they can come back to the same place and we can collect the data from them immediately. Another benefit of penguins, researchers can utilize more of them and cover a larger area. Gary Baumgarten, Fox News. Your complete weekend forecast is coming up after this break. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. All right, thanks again for checking in as we take a look at your local forecast. We'll search out for the webcam from the National Weather Service in Binghamton once again. And blue sky, just a few high wispy clouds drifting overhead. Changes, though, into this upcoming weekend. Saturday, calling for a daytime high into the mid-40s. And then uh, some showers possible Saturday night, early Sunday. But then the heaviest precipitation actually slides in Sunday night into Monday. And locally heavy pockets of rain can't be ruled out along with uh, some snowfall 
snowfall in the tail end of that Monday night. So more on that in a second. But uh, Saturday morning, low temperature of 20, 635 is our sunrise. And then daytime highs a little bit above average here at uh, 46, 501 is our sunset. It really is uh, Sunday that will be uh, the uh, warmest day of the weekend as we top out into the 60s and even dealing with some near record warmth for this upcoming weekend as well. So partly cloudy tonight, dry and mild as we head into your Saturday. Again, Saturday night into Sunday, we'll call it showery, but the heaviest stuff does come in su Sunday night into Monday. Again, some of that rain could be locally heavy with some minor snow accumulations on the tail end of that. So this is a look at our precipitation through the uh, early and middle part of next week. Noticing these yellow colors right along the border of uh, New York and Pennsylvania. That's about an inch plus of total liquid. A little bit less as we head farther north near the uh, Finger Lakes region and the Eastern Great Lakes, but still some appreciative moisture for this uh, early part of March. And again, some of that could be in the form of snowfall by Monday night. As I mentioned, uh, this would be uh, kind of depends on how quickly that colder air settles on in and still some uncertainty in what we would see in uh, total accumulation. So we'll continue to monitor that now. But uh, heading into Saturday, clouds will be thickening up. Uh, we may have a couple of very isolated showers into the afternoon, but it is Saturday night into early Sunday morning when a few of these showers, maybe even a few ice that thunderstorms works through the region. The heaviest again Sunday night into Monday morning, so that does not capture uh, that particular heavy band of rain. But just through 7 p.m. Sunday, there could be a few 100s of an inch of uh, liquid, maybe upwards of a tenth of an inch here and there. So we're going to wake up to temps right where we should be at this time of the year, upper teens and lower 20s. Again, maybe partly cloudy in the morning, skies and uh, clouds thicken up into the afternoon with those winds out of the south gusting up close to 20 miles per hour. Daytime highs running a little bit above average Saturday night. There could be a few showers into early Sunday morning, turning warm and windy on Sunday as we bump up near record levels in many spots. And then again, Sunday night into Monday, here comes that heaviest precipitation. Temperatures then falling into the 30s. And then uh, Monday night, when we drop down below the freezing mark, there could be some snowfall, which uh, lingers into Tuesday. The list of companies pulling the plug on operations in Russia continues to grow, and Sony and Honda are teaming up to form a new company. CJ Papa has the impact to the economy. Nike and Ikea join a growing list of companies pausing operations in Russia because of its invasion of Ukraine. Nike saying it will continue to pay employees' salaries as it temporarily closes all of its 116 stores there. Ikea's move will impact 15,000 workers. The company has 17 stores and nine planning studios in Russia. IKEA also pausing exports and imports in and out of Russia, as well as Belarus. Airbnb also announcing it's suspending operations in Russia and Belarus. That includes 90,000 short-term rentals in Russia and about 1,800 in Belarus. The decision was tweeted by Chief Executive Officer Brian Chesky. Meanwhile, Russia has reportedly blocked access to several social media and Western news sites, including Facebook, Twitter, and the BBC. It comes after Apple pulled access to Russian state-controlled media from the App Store outside Russia. Facebook and YouTube also restricting access to those same Russian media sites. And Honda and Sony Group will work together to develop and sell electric vehicles within three years. Sony is already in the process of creating a car unit. The joint venture will not own its own factories. It will outsource manufacturing to Honda. A vendor for McDonald's that assisted in breakdowns of its ice cream machines is now suing the company for a whopping figure. Jerry Sullivan and Melissa Nelson are suing McDonald's for $900 million. The pair invented a device called Kitsch to help franchises offset problems McDonald's had with its ice cream product machines. McDonald's intervened, warning about machine warranty problems and injury risks, and said Kitsch's claims are meritless. The ice cream machine maker McDonald's uses then made its own device after allegedly reverse engineering the Kitsch device. A cyber group identifies top hacking and scamming targets and why they're sought out for attacks. Cybersecurity firm Vade has a top 20 cyber attack hit list of online sites frequently targeted by cyber attackers. 
Facebook, WhatsApp, and Microsoft are the top three targets, and the financial services industry is the top sought-out place for scamming. Social media was second for targeting. Vade says opportunists attack brands when they're fresh on the minds of end users. Amazon, DHL, Netflix, LinkedIn, and Apple made the top 20 as well. Pet stores are dealing with a shortage of popular brands of canned food nationwide. Officials say between shipping delays, the shortage of protein like chicken and beef, and not enough workers at the canning facilities, some brands have tripled in price. One pet supply marketing manager says there's a solution that will help stores stay above board. Sometimes it's a good idea to work with groups that have their own physical canneries, like brands like Lotus and Fromm, who actually have not just U.S.-based canneries, but they own their own canneries. So that way they control the supply, they control the function, and you don't run into as many issues with that. Experts say it's a good idea to check with your veterinarian first before making a big change in your pet's diet. Proof that Good Samaritans come at all ages. A Las Vegas mom was surprised to find a teenager dropped off her wallet after she lost it at the movie theater with her baby. Bevan Kay has the heartwarming story. A night out at the movies seems normal enough, but when it ends with your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man saving the day, well, that's a different story. We took our little girl, and some time during the movie, my purse got knocked over and my wallet oh. fell out. But unfortunately, I didn't notice until we got home. Nancy Nelson searched everywhere while little Miss Adelaide watched. Could I have dropped it in the car somewhere? We searched the car. Maybe it got kicked behind a chair. We, I went to the theater and searched. Still, no wallet. There was a part of me that really thought that it had gotten thrown away or that someone had stolen it. So imagine her shock at what happened next. No! I came out and I saw it. Along with a note. Hi, we found your wallet at the movie theater. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Stunned yet relieved, she quickly checked her ring video to get a glimpse of the self-proclaimed Peter Parker. Hello, you left your wallet in the movie theater. Which was young, which is why we've blurred his face. I'm gonna leave it right behind this. Right back there, behind the haystack. Have a wonderful night. I taught high school for seven years, and there are good kids out there. Whether the Spider-Man acted alone or had the help of Spider-Mom, this mama wants to meet the humble hero who is a true testament to the old saying that integrity is what you do when no one is watching. They didn't want anything from this. They just wanted to do a good deed. And so um, I, I want to thank them in person and just express my gratitude for, for being the kind of person that we hope everyone is um, and, and for bringing back my wallet. In less than a week and a half, much of the country will be changing to daylight saving time, and that means losing an hour's worth of sleep. When we push our clocks an hour forward that Sunday, March 13th, it will disrupt many people's internal clocks, leaving them feeling groggy and out of sorts. Sleep medicine doctors and a psychologist advise us to go to bed 15 to 20 minutes earlier than usual for up to four nights before the time change. They also recommend adjusting the timing of other daily activities that are cues for the body, like meal times and exercise times. And they say expose yourself to natural light as soon as possible when you wake up. A study finds the coronavirus pandemic severely impacted the death toll in one group of medical patients. The study in Journal of the American Medical Association Neurology found Alzheimer's deaths were up 26 percent during the first year of the pandemic. And Alzheimer's deaths rose even more, 33 percent for those in nursing homes, with higher death rates for Asian, Black and Hispanic populations. The study cites less effective or absent outpatient care and lower inpatient admissions, possibly leading to the higher mortality rates. We want to leave you with a smile. Love triumphs over war as a Ukrainian couple ties the knot in Kyiv. The couple set aside worries of a Russian invasion at Ukraine's capital and got married at the city's civil registration office. The two met seven years ago in the middle of the conflict between Russian-backed separatists and Ukrainian government forces. Dimitro proposed to Anna two months ago. The couple planned to marry during the summer, but moved up the plans with the uncertainty of the future. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.